Being a model railroader means that you can create any locale you want for your empire. Most people recreate old vanished railroads, but some prefer the compactness and scenery of Europe. Marcel Trotwein has recreated scenes from his youth. The Wildwood Scenic Line still exists and is now part of the Grand Delusion mainline passenger service into the mountainous region. Marcel Troutwine has always been interested in trains. This layout's been a work in progress since 1978. Well, when I first uh, bought the house, I saw this empty basement and uh, I already had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to build a, a model railroad. I built other layouts before, but they were a lot smaller than this. This one here is actually permanent, built into the house. If I ever move, I cannot take this with me because it has a cycloramic uh, backdrop. Uh, floor to ceiling scenery. And the cycloramic means it's curved both ways. It's curved from the ceiling down uh, to the wall, down to the floor, and then it's curved also in the corners. So it's like a concave or a concave effect as you're looking into the uh, into the corners. As you see, there's no no lines. I wanted to give it the illusion of depth. He was born in Switzerland. He says that inspired this wonderful layout. I had something about narrow gauge and small mining trains, and there's a lot of that over in, in Europe. So that reflects in my layout. As you can see, there's a lot of unusual things on the layout uh, with small scale trains uh, and mining operations, and it kind of brings back my childhood days. And this, all of this, is from his imagination. But when you hear him tell the story, you almost feel like you know the people who live here in little Switzerland and Bridgeport. This is the highest point a tourist can go, and the view is absolutely breathtaking. In the mountains, weather is always a worry. Same thing in his layout. So uh, the lights start dimming down, and then all of a sudden the lightning uh, starts to flash, and then there's thunder in the background, and then you hear the rain, and basically you have a thunderstorm in the mountains. For Marcel, a lot of the fun of building a layout comes from experimentation and trial and error and ultimately success. He says people just getting started should try to do their best on their own, but if they just can't figure it out, or if they just plain don't have time, he can help. All this started with the help of Marcel. Stan Olander has had three layouts, but for this one, he wanted to go a step further. I visited his layout. I was quite impressed, and I said, I really met quite a craftsman here. And we started discussing layouts, and. Uh, he discussed the importance of building the bench work right to start. And uh, that was a secret of successful operation. So uh, I decided he was the guy to, to do it. And he, looking at his layout, you could tell he's quite a craftsman. He says the key is the bench work, the actual construction that supports his wonderful layout. And that he built with Marcel. We built very good uh, bench work with 1x4 lumber, 5x8 uh, inch uh, exterior plywood, half inch of homosoat, and then a cork road bed on top of that. So it's a very quiet operation, but the bench work is very strong, so it's very stable. No warping a track. And uh, then we uh, did the, uh, soldered every rail joint and filed it down. And that makes for a smoother operation. Attention to detail brings this layout to life. Stan has spent nine months just building trees. Well, a tree is very simple. You use economical ground, green foam, you can blend your colors, but you put the foam in a bucket or a container, and you can see it's just a powdery foam. Then you take the uh, polyfiber, I like black because you don't want to color at all. You know, if you don't cover the entire mass, the black of the interior of a tree looks black. So you kind of make a, a ball like that, very irregular in shape, like a tree would be. Then you spray it with economical hairspray as an adhesive. Then you drop it in the ground foam and bounce it around and uh, coat it completely. And there's a finished uh, tree. It's that simple. Stan figures it'll take another couple of years to complete his dream layout. He says it would not come true without the special help he got from Marcel Troutwine. Oh, I cut the time in half, or maybe by a year. The less time to get the benchwork going, you know. That's the hard part, you know, the 
carpenter part of it. Now I'm in the stage, you know, once we got everything done, that it's the fun part. The scenery and populating the layout now with buildings and people, trees. It's a feeling of accomplishment. It's a good feeling. I'm fulfilling a need for somebody. There's basically, there's people that, that just don't have the time or, or the, the equipment, you know, the machines to build a layout, or they just don't have the knowledge because their specialty is, is in something else. This is where I fulfill a niche. As the years have passed, many unfortunate miners and loggers lost their lives along with horses and mules in avalanches or fell off the sides of the mountain, usually loaded down with logs and ore because of the slippery trails in the winter months. For Marcel, one of the nice things about building a dream layout is that it's a dream that never really ends. There's always something new to create, to dream up, something new for the people who live in and around the world he made. I take my hat off to all those men and women that endured the bitter winters and the damp, dreary darkness of the mines when life was simpler but hard and grueling.